Hey everybody, Barry here again. Like the last video, I have no idea what direction this video is going to go in. But I know where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with the cylinder heads. Dwayne was nice enough to sandblast these for me like months ago. He sandblasted them, then I put in new valve seals you can see down there. Jorge sent me a set of Pac-1218 springs for this to match the Sloppy Stage 2 cam that he sent me to put in it. So the heads are ready to go. I was going to paint them, but then I was like, eh, never done the bare aluminum looking thing. I know it's sandblasted, so it's not like the prettiest, but... It's aluminum heads. They look aluminum. I was going to paint them, but let's be honest. You don't see the cylinder heads at all. The best time that an engine looks is when it's on the stand, assembled, painted. It looks amazing, and then you bolt it in, and you bolt on this big chunk of aluminum alternator bracket and you bolt on the water pump and you bolt manifolds on it the big top covers it's just completely clouded and covered by stuff so i'm not going to waste any paint really but they are very clean inside is also nice and clean i power washed these like three times before i put the valves and that in and then i wrapped them up in plastic bag and left them on the shelf good to install also i got new head bolts I had the front of Desperado sort of haphazardly assembled, just sort of laid in place, a couple of bolts put in it. So I removed all that so that I can get in here nice and comfy, probably sit down on the bar, eat a hot dog or something, and bolt the heads on in comfort. And I have this all cleaned up. It's all ready to go, ready to bolt on. I already have my dowels in, as you can see, and it's just got to remove the bag, bolt the heads on. Off to the races. For anyone who hasn't seen or doesn't know what this engine is, it's a 2009 aluminum 5.3. It had DOD or AFM, and I got rid of all that sloppy, sloppy stage 2 cam, as previously mentioned. I have a Gen 3 crank in it, so it has the 24X reluctor, and I also have the 1X LS2 cam gear up here, which I'm going to wire up to make this a Gen 3 engine. I painted the block black, and Dwayne, again, being the awesome guy that he is, powder-coated the oil pan, the front cover, and the two valve covers. And they look spectacular because it's blue to, like, this cool bronze color when the light hits it right. Too bad it's going to be covered up by ugly coils. Oh, yeah, and new head gaskets. I got a can of copper spray up front, but I haven't tried that before, so... I'm just not in the mood for that not to work today. Installed. I went ahead and bolted one head on. I've done this several times on film now. I'm sure you guys have seen it several times. Got it bolted on. One thing that I like to do is every time I finish up my last pass, I like to mark each bolt. You can see down here, here's some orange paint marker. So when I get my first sequence done, second sequence done and when i start my last sequence so i don't get mixed up i mark I, I torque a bolt put some paint blob on it torque it put some paint on and that way i know that my last pass is done like that and then i torque these little five ones last i lose you can't mess that up something else actually that i forgot to mention to you guys i bolted all this stuff on the front end steering components and all that and i put some links on it because I had to pull it outside and I didn't want the two wheels to just kick in. So I had to kind of bolt it together. So it was just like bolting on tie rods and bolt the steering box on. This steering shaft is cooked. You can see down there, it's just completely dead. So I need to get one of those. And yeah, it's just been picking out a little bit of wiring and stuff. I'm trying to figure out where all this goes. Obviously I know it goes here to the fuse block, but that's all good. Oh yeah, and I bolted that head on. <laughs> I've got a nice bit of Sort of like finish up things. I don't call it finish up because this won't be finished for any time very, very soon at all. Now, I know it's only been like that long, but I have been busy. I have been busy gathering parts for this thing. There's an extended cab outside and the rat rod that I took a lot of parts off. This came off the rat rod, which makes me extremely sad, but I only had one and this is the current thing. Took the intake off the truck outside. It's an extended cab Chev 05 or something. Manifold came off of the frame that's in under here. Came off that truck, which is also what the bed came off of. 
Halton inner power steering bracket. Of course, it leaked every drop of power steering fluid all over the floor. I should have probably tipped that up higher. And radiator, all this stuff was good. All this stuff held fluid, nothing leaked. Electric fans, both spin with zero effort. I'm gonna bolt all this stuff on. I've realized that in order for me to really continue with this thing, the engine bay has to be next. Get the power steering bracket and all that bolted on, water pump manifolds, intake manifold, get all that done and then I can work my way outward because if I bolt the body on, then I'm leaning in over the grill and the fenders and all that and it's just annoyance. So we're gonna start here, work our way out. Well, starting from the middle, here is a factory 4.8 Gen 4 cover. It's basically a DOD delete cover. People told me this wouldn't work. They said it would blow out these little O-rings and stuff. I don't think so because, I mean, it didn't on the rat rod. This was a new Felpro gasket kit with all the new O-rings and stuff. It's in immaculate shape, so I'm just going to bolt it on as is. And the nice thing about these rubber and metal gaskets is they're reusable because it's literally an o-ring if it's not torn it will work and i know this green and i know it's ugly but it's an under the intake so i really don't care quick i was debating on whether i put the intake first or the rockers but i think i'll do the rockers in case any dirt from the intake kind of falls down in here rockers and in valve covers it's a saturday and my wife and kids are away for the day so i'm really gonna bomb away at this thing and that means a little bit less video a little bit more time working but i'll check in periodically well we're off to a good start i just boot the bowl and everything on and i was like wait a minute i think i'm i think i'm missing something Rockers are all bolted in. I got them oiled up with push rods this time. Now it's time to bolt on these beautiful valve covers that Dwayne Powder coated for me. I'm so excited to put these on. And then I can bolt on this one. It's a four corner steam vent tube, which I'm really excited to have. I like the four corner one. This one's in good shape. Usually they get really rusty around the welds right here and right here, but this one's, this one's really nice. And I think, I'm pretty sure I have new gaskets for them up front. I just got to grab them. And here's the gaskets for the steam vent tube, or it's called engine crossover pipe or something. It comes with these plate ones, which I like, and O-rings. Not sure why it comes with both, but I'm going to use the plates anyway. I just realized that I don't have any intake gaskets. Sorry, right, Rod. I wonder if I could use the front fenders on this. Stop, stop, stop. I'm only here for the intake gaskets. The intake, I just got kind of laid back in place so the cylinders don't fill full of snow. Uh, here are the gaskets. These are Felpro gaskets. I ran 13 pounds of boost through them, or 14 pounds, and they're just fine. So I'm going to reuse them. To be honest, these original gaskets probably would have been just fine. But I know these are good. Sorry if that made anybody dizzy. I actually got dizzy myself. <laughs> Making some really fast progress. I'm so excited. I don't know how many times I've said progress since I started this channel a thousand videos ago, but it's a lot. It's like one of my favorite words. On that note, I'm ready to put oil in it. This is kind of a day. Look, I put on the little spout and we got some mathing to do, some numbering. So I grabbed a bottle of 20W50 because it was the first thing I saw on the shelf, which in hindsight, probably a bit thick. Anyway, that's what I poured down over the rockers and stuff when I was installing them. And it takes 5W30, so we got five 5W30s and one 20W50, so I wonder what viscosity that's going to make. Is it going to be like 13W40? 13W... Let's just call it 15W40, and we're good to go. Let's see if I can make a mess. <laughs> oh, that was so close. <laughs> this one's going to be a little more difficult. Yeah, I better not push my log. Oh, that was close. I wonder if I put a drain plug in. I just pulled my water pump out and realized I have a van water pump. More rot rod parts. Please forgive me for the atrocities I'm about to commit again. 
Okay, that's way too much work. So you're safe for now. Good thing I got a bunch more Chevys to pull parts off of. Man, it's nuts. Yesterday I was out here with two sweaters on and a pair of gloves and a toque just to stand the cold and the wind. And today I'm in a t-shirt and I might actually fire up the barbecue. Here's a good candidate. So I know that water pump was good because the guy drove the truck right up until it overheated and blew up. I figure it's a good time before I bolt on this big hunk of aluminum there to put on my ground wire because that's right down behind the alternator bracket. It loops together here, so I just got to kind of undo that. And there it is. That's the funny. It's the only ground from the battery, uh, I suppose, except for that one. But the only beefy ground for the battery is right there. As far as I remember, I think it goes here or there, but I'll go out and check out another engine to be sure. Let's see where this ground wire goes. Oh, this one has it, yep. All right, let's see. Down here, over there. And it goes, the bolt directly behind the oil pump thing, right there. Alrighty, a little more of my favorite gloopy stuff. And tighten it out. And we have a ground wire. And every time I put a part on this, ugh, it just gets uglier. I got the belt on and I'm like, well, I'm starting to get a little too far forward here. I should work my way outward now. Yeah, I don't have any spark plugs or wires or coils. I got one manifold. Got a dipstick tube. To the rat road we go. I swear the truck will be back on the road again. Well, I'm out here at the rat road taking manifolds off. I, I got lots of plug wires and stuff. I'm just going to leave the hood off until I'm done because I, I'm pretty sure I got the pins wore out taking it off so much. Anyway, I'm over here unbolting spark plugs and, and I was like, yeah, I got to take off the dipstick tube in order to get the manifold off. And then I was like, wait, where is the dipstick tube? So anyway, I don't know when that flew out, but it ain't there now. I just took the manifold out from it under the truck and looked at the oil filter and went, that's what I forgot to screw on the truck. So I'm not sure if it's the 4060 or 85042 because there's two different pans and I have no idea which one I put on. So I'm gonna see which filter screws on and then I'm gonna order the blue Wix filter because we don't have one here. Worst part about lowering your truck, can't get under it anymore. Nope. Is that the 4060? That doesn't seem right either. Huh. Okay, here's another filter. It's a 85522. And we had the blue one in this. Hoping it's going to fit. Like, how many Chev 5.3 oil filters are there? work please work hey that one seems right perfect I got the oil filter pretty much filled up this is a bottle of new oil just needs another little drippy drip I'm using used manifold yes it's here but I don't care if they're new I'm using ultra copper anyway it's like the only way that a Chev won't leak. This is the way. Isn't that just beautiful? I actually forgot that I went out to grab the coils too. It's starting to get a little bit darker out now. There's the moon. So I'm starting to run out of daylight. And uh, I gotta grab one more manifold off a truck, off the engine that I pulled the water pump off of. The problem is the manifold is facing down in the engine bay. And I think it's resting right on the steering shaft, so I might have to grab the truck and just yank the engine out of that truck and figure out how to get it back out of the way later on. I'm pretty sure there's only a couple of bolts in this. I can't remember, can't remember if I put more in or not. Most of the engine is under the firewall, so I couldn't really get them all in there. Oh, nope, I'm good. Probably a good idea to 
remove the two-step also because now the connectors are open and I'd rather not have them corrode. Hopefully this works well. The strap doesn't bust off and beat the back window of my truck. What am I going to wrap this around, I wonder? Close enough for me. So with this piece here on it, I'm not sure if it's just going to gingerly slide down there or not. And I absolutely doubt it. So this is going to be fun. I'm going to have to go up through, I think. I really don't want to undo that steering shaft again because that was not fun to get in there. Hmm. Well, it's a tight fit. This uh, might not be the prettiest job I've ever done, but, <laughs> you know. What do you do? I'm going to pull the manifold from up here and then bolt it on that way. I crawled it under it and I am not as nimble as I once was. It was nasty, but I got it bolted on. That bolt back there, I do not understand why it was so tight. I don't remember it being that hard to get out before. But also, I think every Chev truck has that bolt broken off, so I've never actually had to remove it with a wrench before. Hmm. Well, the manifolds are on. I guess now I can bolt the coil brackets on, put plugs in it, put the wires on, and it'll actually look like a complete engine. That's super cool. Actually, before I do that, I know I have this bracket somewhere. But where? I couldn't tell you. One of the plugs was hard to take out of the rat rod. And if I turn it just right, you see how five or six treads down is real shiny and then it just gets dull? Looks like the treads are rolled. See that? Huh. I just went to screw it into the head and it went in like half a tread and stopped. That's freaky. I'm not using that plug again. I won't quit my day job. Actually, you know what? The right rod wouldn't start the other day and I was nervous about the plugs, so I'm not going to risk it. New plugs it is. Little... Off the beaten path, story time. My mother has an 87 Olds Cutlass Supreme with a 305 in it. And I put new spark plugs in it one day because it was running kind of funny. And when I got the plugs in, I drove it up here to the shop just to get a few tools. And as I was driving up the shop, it was like, B -b 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 had a real bad misfire. And I was like, man, did I break a wire? Did I mess something up? Any, what happened? Did I crack the distributor cap? One plug wasn't gapped in the box. So from that moment forward, I check every spark plug as soon as I take them out of the box to make sure the gap isn't blocked off. Because between the factory and so many thousand miles away to you or me, it probably got dropped. So these two plugs are fresh out of the box and right away you can see that the one on the right is closed off more. Come over here and grab my handy dandy plug tool. Now, I got a Champion one. I would have much rather than NGK or Delco, but, well, that's the only one I could find. It's funny how I always keep it on my keychain, and I've used it so many times, so I always keep it. What do we got? The good plug is, come on, uh, $45,000. The not-so-good plug is, like, $29,000. So, let's just open that one up a lot. Here we go, now we're good. Double checked, and now we don't have any fire issues. I got plug wires put on, and uh, I got them all done with dielectric grease, of course. I put some grease in here and then outside again, and everything's installed. This is a complete engine now, as far as I can tell. I'm not putting air conditioning on it, so that's not part of the complete. 
I don't have a good power steering cooler, so I think I'm going to take the return hose, just loop it, run it back. Or I may bring it out here and in front of the rad, run a long piece of uh, steel pipe and then back. That'd just be like some of the vehicles that have like a tubular uh, power steering or transmission cooler. So I think I might do something like that. If I can find a good factory cooler, I'll use it. If not, I don't really care. It's not a plow truck and it doesn't have Hydro Boost on it right now. So I don't think it's very necessary at the moment. But dude, this is a lot of work for one weekend, man. And I still have a bunch of body stuff up here, minus the two drive shafts, that I'll be bolting on this week. Now that the engine is completely assembled, minus a couple small things like, well, obviously the wiring, then I can start working on the body stuff. That's really exciting because, you know, working my way anywhere, like I said. Now I think before I do the body stuff, I'm going to lift the cab up. I already have cab mount bolts in it, so I'll just unbolt them, lift the cab up off. The only thing I have to disconnect now is the steering shaft, which I said earlier that I didn't want to do, but whatever, just do it. And uh, then I can put my transmission lines on and I can run my fuel lines. Then I can run all my new brake lines that I'm going to do. So there's still a lot of stuff that's in under the frame that I can still hook up. But I am done for today because it has been a long weekend and I've put in a lot of hours. This video hopefully is going to be relatively manageable length and hopefully you enjoyed watching the video. So thanks for checking out the channel. Thanks to my subscribers, YouTube members and patrons. If you want to check out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash station road rat rods. My YouTube members link is down here and that's a couple of ways you can help with this thing. And thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.